Is it normal that I'm still on the first derb skin? Yeah, and that's a small list. That's what I'm on too. It's a small list. It's taken a while though. It's a small list. Mm. To give you an example, like if I'm on a pen test, I'll run derby and it'll probably last about four, four to six hours. Whoa. So do you have like multiple computers or, or like different uh, systems that you use to make that faster? I do. So that's actually exactly what we're about to talk about in the next few minutes. So the reason that until you go through what you went through just now, would you have really had any context of what this stuff lasts in terms of timing? Yeah, I, I, always, I always thought it was, you know, real fast and loose when you're running these kinds of programs. Dude, dude, I can't believe it only took you two minutes to win the final round. Can you please take your hand off me and leave me alone? Yeah, dude, I, I, I was just the... Thank you. I... Right. And, and how many of you guys have really kind of thought about it? You're only doing this against one machine. Extrapolate that out to let's call it 10 host, which is small. 10 host in 24 hours. Would you have to better allocate your time now that you kind of understand what's involved? Yeah, I think so. Automation. Have to deal with automation, huh? And, and get some sleep. <laughs> yeah, and get some sleep. Now you guys realize like, now that you've been doing this, a derby scan, would you sit and watch it now ever again? No. No, I... you go back and look at it every half hour or so, right? Yes. Yeah. Right, Nick those scans, would you sit and watch them? No. No, I can check every half hour or so. So if you write scripts that kick off these things in a certain order, now I've got my breaks and when I'm going to lunch and all that stuff all factored in now, huh? Well, in order to factor in, don't you know how have to know how big uh, the or how long the scan will take? How how can you determine that? Well, after a while, you get kind of a feel of stuff. So most of these things on on fairly fairly small small host, meaning not complex websites, is less than a half hour per scan. Okay. Okay, so it's not too, too bad. Uh, show you something that happened to me not too long ago. So I got tasked with doing a pen test at, um, and now I'm wanting you guys, now that you kind of understand what this is like, look at this project scope. What are you guys noticing about those project scopes? Every one of those is a whole subnet, isn't it? Yes. And the customer's like, yeah, we'll do these 10 or these 15 subnets per day. So, we all had a great question. Like, hey, I mean, if you're, if you're doing all this stuff, do you go out there with multiple laptops? So, um, I've been pen testing for a while. So I pen tested ESPN. I pen tested a bunch of hotels, uh, casinos, hospitals, you name it. I pen tested a, most of it. Government stuff, banks, pen tested a lot of banks. Um, if you look, the next question I got asked was, how many uh, laptops do you take when you go on a penetration test? And I take four. So if I'm doing my pen test, I'm out there with four laptops. Four laptops running all of this stuff scripted. Now that leads to another question. Is any of this stealthy at all? Uh, no. Yeah, no way, huh? When you're putting that much data on the wire and you're running that many scripts and they're brute forcing and scanning, this is not stealthy. Most people don't understand that very few penetration tests have a stealth requirement. The reason is because if they want a stealth requirement, when I'm trying to be stealthy, I'm usually only connecting to uh, 
three to four ports every 60 seconds. So you can't run this kind of stuff. You can't run all these brute forcers and things like that if your goal is to evade security solutions. Which obviously slows down the process, your process, which makes it longer. Yeah. Right. So if I'm in a stealthy engagement, I can't do stealthy engagements in less than two to three weeks. So stealthy engagements are usually like five to eight weeks. Whereas most of our penetration tests are only one week long. So if I've only got one week and I might have to look through 10 or 15,000 IP addresses in one week, just like when you looked at that launch plan document, that was an awful lot of sites to look through in just one week, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. So is there any concern to be stealthy when we have scopes like this? Can't even do it not even a consideration. So a customer will hire you and be like, look, I've got you know, 20,000 IPs, I'll give you two weeks to get through it. And my internal metric is about 100 hosts per hour. If effectively automated, we can securely, we can do a security assessment on about 100 hosts per hour. So if they've got a thousand hosts, that's 10 hours, man hours, right? So 5,000 hosts, you know, we can pretty comfortably manage that in a week. Start getting over 5,000 hosts, then we need, you know, two weeks, three weeks when they start getting into 10, 20, 30,000 endpoints. So now is what I was talking about, those long days, is it starting to click? Yeah, yeah I got you. Yeah, these days are long, huh? Days. They're long days. And the reason that these days are so long is because when you stop pen testing for the military, everything changes because it's profit driven. When we pen tested and red team for the military, we went out as a huge team of people. When I go out on a penetration test since I've left the military, it's just me. So I'm out there by myself. I got to do network, web app, wireless and physical and policy review all in five days by myself. Whereas when we were pen tested for the military, we take six, eight guys. You know, you got a physical access group, you got a wireless access group. You get on the commercial side, it's just you. If you send out five people, you won't make any profit. So that's the big difference of your government pen testing versus your commercial pen testing. Like when I went, when I went commercial, I was like, this is insane. Um, but it forced me to have to learn the scripting. It forced me to have to learn to really be super, super efficient. It also, as I started to teach, it also started to really help me realize we're bad at teaching this. The reason that we're bad at teaching this is because they're so focused on teaching you the concepts, what scanning and all that kind of stuff, you know, what it is, you don't really learn where it fits in the scope of a project, if that makes sense. You guys knew most of the stuff I've taught today. Maybe you hadn't done it, but you knew of it, right? Testing a web service for security issues, you know, port scans, you guys knew it. How many of you guys today, it really hits you with, my God, this stuff is slow, right? That's like culture shock. Like you gotta be freaking kidding me. This is slow. Man, there's too many garbage files. I need more time. Game's over. Last chance to get out of this without a prison sentence. You're not good enough to beat me. Oh, shit. Yeah, maybe I'm not. And we're doing these, all of these with really small password lists, aren't we? really simple web servers, no complex configurations, no clustered databases, no load balancers, no IDSs. Think about it. You've got no security products in play at all. There's no antivirus, no IDS, no IPS, no proxy solutions. You've got none of that in place, no SIM solutions. 
you're doing this against a really small network with no defensive products, no defensive personnel, and each product, each target is a simple target. And this stuff is taking forever. What's it like when you're in a complex environment that has security solutions in place? This stuff is, it takes even longer. The reason why I teach this way is because I want you to kind of get it from a practitioner's point of view. I don't think our job is that hard. I just think our job is tedious. I actually think the job is pretty simple. I don't know if you guys are kind of feeling the same thing. Like now that you have a list of the commands that you run, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right. I light them up and run them, don't you? If I had to differentiate, you get people who know our job. The only reason that we find more stuff than a person who works there would find is we just hit it harder. If I'm going for a password attack and my password list is 8 million passwords, guys, you realize that I'm running that password list probably for a week. So like when I'm going after your wireless, I've got one laptop just just doing a brute force on the wireless password. I'm going to run that sucker for the whole week that I'm there trying to crack your wireless password. 8 million passwords with usually 28 to 50 permutations per password. A couple hundred password attempts a second. It's going to take all week. Well, that one laptop is off on its own just trying to crack the wireless password all week. So most guys who are employees who configured the wireless, yeah, they might run some password tests against it, but are they going as hard as I am? No. The guy who built the web server, yeah, he might run some security technical stuff against it, but is he running a 3 million word list for Derby, against it like I am? Is he running all the MICTO scans and stuff against it like I am? You know, is he looking for all these, you know, configuration things and web app scans against it like I am? You know, I'm gonna do probably two to three days of scans just on that one web server. He's probably gonna do a half hour test and go, yeah, it looks good. So it's not that we're smarter than the admins. We're not. We just hit every server harder with a bigger list of issues to look for than they do. That's the name of the game. Um, any shocks, like how long things took or uh, any idea that we didn't do these additional things? Any feedback on the OSCP and stuff like that? Um, I think it's good that you're showing us like the process because like the different steps, I think before, you know, I might do one step and then jump way down to number four and skip the others. So, you know, that's good for me. So now, you know, I'm going to have like my list of steps that I'm going to follow in the future. So that's really helpful for me. Okay. So you're, you're kind of feeling like you're going to build out your own process. Yes. Here's my things that I do. Yes. There you go. Hey, I'm saying that. I'm saying that. On your side, for the software development and engineering background, um, a lot of guys from your side of the house, um, they know of security, you know, in other words, like they know it's important, but they kind of don't know what we do to look for security issues in the things that you build. So for example, I taught a class for um, a company that makes routers, you know, they make network equipment. And I had um, 11 of their programmers in the class. And to see the looks on their faces of this is what you do to my stuff, like like they're builders, you, you know what I mean? They, they, they didn't know that this is what it looks like for me, you know, or how long I'm willing to be on something. A lot of people, they, they don't have that mindset that this hacker is willing to spin you know, four or five days of 10, 12 hour days, just on this one thing that you wrote, looking for something that you did wrong, right? 